Hey guys, what's up? This is Andrew for TrendSenses.com. So, like I said in my uh, AMC video that I posted yesterday, guys, I'm gonna be moving this week. I go back to France after seven years, 6.5 years in Hong Kong. I'm gonna stay a bit in France, then I'm not sure, probably Dubai, then Miami, I, I don't know yet, but whatever. The thing is that I'm not gonna be able to do any updates during the weekend. So this is the last update of the week and the next update is gonna be done around the 2nd or the 3rd of December, just for you to know. So let's analyze everything that happened after this huge breakout and retest and see what can happen next. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so here is the situation. Let me sum up a bit uh, what happened in the past week. So we have this huge triangle, just like we have on AMC, and we had the breakout. Is it a breakout? So let's check. Let's check if this breakout is valid or not. So for a breakout to be valid, what we want to see is some consolidation before. Ideally, we want to close above the upper band of the Bollinger Band, and we want to have some volume. So first thing, when we go across those levels, so here and here, we had two strong days, plus eight, plus eight. I was updating you guys here, and I was saying if we close above 230, we are looking am amazingly good. I was also saying that I'm not sure if we're gonna get rejected first or go to 250 and then get rejected. The second scenario happened. I personally, like I said, bought some puts here. I didn't increase my position by buying more puts on the upside because, you know, when it's that bullish, you don't wanna buy puts, and I just exit my put position around the same level I bought it. So uh, I'm back with my original position and I'm very happy about it. And right now the situation is that we had this two strong days. So yeah, we were checking the volume guys and look, bam, the volume is big, big. And the day we move lower, so we did minus 13%, all right? And the previous two days was plus eight, plus eight. But look at the volume. So we went through a wider range of price action, a bigger range of price action uh, on the bearish day, but the volume is smaller than uh, the second day and roughly the same, a bit higher than the first day. So this is rather good. And then the volume of the last day is even lower, but nothing much happened here. So what is the situation guys? So the situation is that we had the breakout. It has been confirmed. We closed above 230, which was the recent high, but like I said, we have some noise created by this candle here that only traded a few hours. Uh, and this is the reason why I believed we would go through this. On that day, when I saw GameStop trading at 250, I was like, all right, we are doing it right now. We are, we are going there. We didn't, you know, it, uh, it's like that. We got rejected and this was kind of expected. You can check my previous video. This was my second scenario. But the truth is that even when I was looking at it, I was feeling like we are doing it ra right now. It didn't happen this three hours resistance level because we only spent three hours, even less one hour there around the 250 level got us rejected. And we got back to the resistance trend line that is at uh, right now 220. So whenever we do that, we do that to take back some energy. You can check the RSI overbought here, overbought here. So, you know, it's just the market needs more energy. How can you assess the energy another way? So you can check the RSI, you can also check the Bollinger Bands. So here, Let's see if this breakout is valid. So here, for example, you see they tightened very well. I'm looking more and more at those Bollinger Bands. So you're going to see them more and more on my chart because they are actually very helpful to identify consolidation periods. I was before that doing it visually, but why would I keep doing that visually when I have a beautiful tool that is doing it for me? So here we, we can see that this was a nice breakout. So it was a short term breakout that I gave you, by the way. And here as well, guys, we closed above. So on that day, it was, I mean, we had all the positive signals, only here the Bollinger Bands were a bit wide because of this noise. This is the reason why we don't like to see some noise before a breakout, because it creates some resistance level first and it creates also more volatility in the price. So it can go on both uh, sides, it can go on the upside or on the downside like we had here. Basically when the Bollinger Bands are wide, everything can pretty much happen. So this is the situation. So right now, what is my view? So my view is that the breakout happened, the bulls are in control in the long term, they know that they can take control, but they suffered, uh, you know, some losses here. I was personally not buying in that move up, but I could have be uh, a buyer there. 
And if I was, I know that uh, right now you don't feel great, right? You feel like, oh, I, I shouldn't have FOMO. And you know, both are a bit feeling like this right now. So I think we need a bit more time. Ideally, we need to stay above the 20 day moving average right now at 209 because this is uh, usually what is supporting the price during the strong moves up. So as long as we're above that level, we have the momentum with us. Let's check in the past how it happened. Okay, so you can see here in the first move up in September 20, it was acting very well. Then here it got broken. And then once it's broken, we needed like roughly two weeks, even more before going really higher. We, we needed one month. All right. So once it's broken here, same thing broken, then three weeks and then here broken and even longer, one month. So basically once this 20 day moving average is broken after we started to move up, in the past, we can see that we usually need two weeks, one month to recover and start to be really bullish again. So this is the reason why I don't want it to see broken. I would like the price action to close above that every day. Uh, if this happens, of course, it would be very good for the coming week. If it doesn't happen, then the alternative scenario. So let's finish on the first scenario. So this time, if we go again to 250, like 80% probability for me uh, that it doesn't hold and if it doesn't hold look at that guys so we're going to check quickly the shorts but especially i want to show you what we have on the 300 strike all right because this is the reason why if we break 250 we go to th to 350 for me okay because the 300 strike is absolutely massive you can see it's uh, almost twice as big as the 250 strike, which is the first strike just above us, right? So this is unusual on AMC. We don't have that on AMC. The biggest strike is the 40 strikes so on GameStop. This is more bullish, let's be honest, than AMC. And if we break 250, we're probably going to go quickly to 300. And if we come close to 300, we're going to go to 350. So my scenario is that either we right away bounce back, okay, doing something like this. Okay, then correct. This correction is a bit too deep, maybe something more like this. So first scenario, and if this happens, I would personally be, once again, I have some calls, I would be buying puts. This is the best thing not to, you know, you don't touch your upside performance. You, you don't modify it by buying puts. You just buy puts, which you can sell lower later. So this is, I think, a good thing that you can do to take some profits on the way up without touching your upside performance. If GameStop just goes to 800 right away, you will make roughly the same uh, amount of money as if you don't buy those puts uh, because their position disappears on the upside. So I would be personally buying some puts around 350 that I would probably try to take profit around 250, but I would not, not do anything on the way up. And the alternative scenario is that unfortunately we break this, we find more support here, we consolidate, I don't know for how long, and then we do this strong move up. Okay. So we can go even a bit lower. We have the 200 day moving average that is coming right now at 182 guys. So this is a very strong support. Uh, so this is alternative scenarios that once again, we break it. And in this situation, it would take probably at least two weeks, one month before we start to move higher again. So let's find out what is going to happen. Let me just finish on the 950 strike. I want to monitor that level with you guys, just like I'm doing with AMC 145 strike. Okay, bam, where is it? Okay, so the 955 strike is here. So last time we had uh, 4.1 million, we are at 4.17, so 4.17 million uh, shares, equivalent shares on this strike. So once again, this is a sign of bullishness. This is something I'm going to keep an eye on. So that's it for me. Let me just recap what is the situation. The preferred scenario is that we find support at uh, this level here on this trend line. So we might be drifting a little bit lower. It's fine. We need just to stay above this 20 day moving average that is right now at 209. If this happens, the bullish momentum is still with us. We're probably going to go to 250, break it this time, go to 350. This is my preferred scenario. Otherwise, we might take one more month and see what is happening later, but uh, I'm pretty sure that we're going to have a strong support around the 200 day moving average. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to click on the sub, like and bell button. So you're going to be the first to know when I upload anything new and stay close to shore. I see you guys.